Hi, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com. Before I get into the Tony Thompson, David Price rematch, let me just make a few comments on an article that appeared on a few websites, one of them, one of my favorites, BoxingScene.com, <clears throat> that had my name attached to it yesterday. Right now, to my viewers, as I always say, you know, the opinion you should follow should be your own. You should question everything, including this video. Right? But, here's what you need to know about that story. Here's what I can tell you at this time. I hope to talk with specificity later at the appropriate time, but right now there's a lot of discussion going on and of course I have to choose my words carefully. Let me just say, when I'm not here online making videos, I'm actually a member of the bar. I'm a litigator. I'm out there fighting the good fight. I'm relentlessly pro-athlete, right? The athletes are young. They come from backgrounds such as mine. At the core, I'm really a guy from Queens, New York City, right? The contracts they're signing are lengthy with a lot of provisions. The promoters and others in the world of boxing are repeat players. They know the lay of the land, right? So, to enforce contracts, right, fighters have to deal with regulatory schemes and boxing commissions. Now, let me just say, again, I wish I could say more. People need to understand that after these skirmishes or during the skirmish, everyone wants to claim victory. Here's what I can say, and I would encourage members of the press to do their homework, to investigate. Here's what I can say. The commission found breaches of multiple paragraphs of the party's promotional agreement. Right? That, simply put, is the finding we wanted. Right? Breaches of multiple paragraphs of the party's agreement. Here's my invitation to the media. If, let's say, the promoter involved is before you and you're questioning the promoter, Simply ask that promoter whether the commission found that the promoter breached multiple paragraphs of the promotional agreement. Very simple question. Cuts to the heart of the case. It explains why, in fact, there was a case and why the fighter took a principled stand. Right? We can argue over the proper legal remedy for the breaches. But what we can't argue over is the actual finding that there were breaches. So just keep that in mind. Nor can there be any argument that the fighter has not had an exclusive promoter since 2008, right? That's paragraph 17 of the decision, right? The fighter actually has more than one promoter. In other words, more than one promoter is empowered to speak on behalf of the fighter. That was also a finding that was very important because of course it determines who sits at the table as the fighter goes forward in getting back in the ring, negotiating the contracts that need to be negotiated, 
both with the opponent and of course with the media outlets that might show the fights okay and so these are the things to consider understand as I said before everyone is gonna claim victory but the viewers really need to rest assured that the fighter in question is actually much more powerful today much more powerful than he was going into the battle right much more powerful we're actually reviewing our options as you can imagine <clears throat> you know their findings then there's the remedy we're gonna talk about exactly what's gonna happen going forward but again as I've said I want the press to do its homework I want the boxing public to question everything this video um, PR statements issued by the parties involved um, the entire thing and just ask yourself what exactly were the findings that's what's important let's talk about the rematch David Price versus Tony Thompson right now a little bit of history these guys fought before right Tony Thompson was a huge underdog big right Tony Thompson actually delivered for us Thompson got the early stoppage at the time David Price was unbeaten these two guys have signed up for a rematch David Price is again the favorite was Thompson the beneficiary of a lucky punch and a fortuitous moment let's get into it let me just say this right Tony Thompson does have a problem right his problem can be summed up in two words Vladimir Klitschko we remember a fighter's biggest moments when that fighter fights for the heavyweight championship those moments are remembered right when you think Tony Thompson really the first two fights that come to mind are his two battles against Vladimir Klitschko for the heavyweight championship now Vladimir Klitschko throws a great straight long right hand just like David Price does. Klitschko is tall, just like David Price is. Klitschko hits hard, just like David Price hits. Right? You don't have an opportunity when you're fighting Vladimir Klitschko to recover from your mistakes. In other words, when he hits you with that sledgehammer, straight right hand from across the street, right? And Vladimir Klitschko, perhaps more than any other fighter, has, we'll call it ring coverage. He can be across the ring, throw that long right hand, and hit you in a different area code, right? When he hits you, fighters aren't able to then say to themselves, I've been hit by... Vladimir Klitschko's right hand I need to think about that and make some adjustments you don't even get that opportunity because more times than not if you're hit by a Klitschko right hand you're no longer upright your thoughts aren't on making adjustments your thoughts quite frankly are on beating the count right here's why I'm taking Tony Thompson again in the rematch simply put David Price is not Vladimir Klitschko. Understand that while they both throw great long right hands, while they both have highlights where their opponents get hit and the opponent looks like he has been in a car crash thereafter, right? Vladimir Klitschko is much more advanced than David Price. Vladimir Klitschko, for one, has a much better jab. He keeps you busy. He frames what he's doing. You're worried about things other than Vladimir Klitschko's devastating straight right hand. You have to worry about the jab. You have to worry about the hook. You have to worry, quite frankly, about 
the pressure. Look at the Vladimir Klitschko, Ruslan Chagayev fight. Understand, Chagayev has been in the ring with multiple heavyweight champions, right? This is a guy who's fought elite fighters, right? This is the guy who beat Nikolai Valuev when Valuev was unbeaten. And what you're going to find is that Ruslan Chagayev is simply overwhelmed. Vladimir Klitschko is on him, and Chagayev has a problem getting off the ropes, right? One of the hallmarks of Vladimir Klitschko's game is that Vladimir Klitschko is ready physically, post Lehman Brewster, to go 12 rounds, right? He is there. He is active. He is a problem. <clears throat> now, I liken David Price more to Saul Alvarez when it comes to pacing than Vladimir Klitschko. David Price takes off whole portions of rounds. David Price, who's in his 30s, <clears throat> like Klitschko, but who isn't stamina-wise Vladimir Klitschko. David Price will often be over by the ropes, right? will often not be throwing punches. He doesn't have the ability to keep you at the end of a jab. That's a talent. That's a skill. That's what's needed <clears throat> against Tony Thompson. Tony Thompson's a southpaw. The angles are bad for most righties. I know every righty shows up and thinks that they can hit a southpaw with a straight right hand. Easier said than done. <clears throat> Let me also say, Tony Thompson against Vladimir Klitschko, in my opinion, forget what the judges were scoring. Look at the actual fight. In my opinion, during that first fight, he had the heavyweight championship right in front of him. <clears throat> if he's not doing crazy things like going straight back after punches against Vladimir Klitschko, a guy who could take a step forward and hit you from distance. If Tony Thompson isn't doing crazy things like that, Tony Thompson, in my opinion, could have won the heavyweight championship. But Thompson let that fight get away. He ends up getting knocked out in the later rounds of that fight. Right? Klitschko turns the tide. Thompson is winning the fight. Klitschko turns the tide. Klitschko does what Klitschko does. He finishes his opponent, right? And, of course, how did he do it? Long, straight right hand. In the rematch, Thompson has a good first round, but then Vladimir Klitschko opens up on him, starts hunting him down. But understand, this is after having seen Tony Thompson for something like 11 rounds in the first fight. So, of course, the mystery was gone. And Vladimir Klitschko is aggressive. In being able to hunt down Tony, he abandons his jab. He's more aggressive than we've seen Vladimir Klitschko in perhaps any other fight since he first became linked with Emmanuel Stewart many years ago and revamped his style, right? And, of course, Vladimir Klitschko was able to hunt down and stop Tony Thompson, right? Thompson gets hit with the kitchen sink, quite frankly, when Thompson hits the canvas, he has his hand up like this on the canvas. He looks traumatized. No question about it. Now, what critics of Tony Thompson need to realize is that's the worst moment of Tony's career. Tony Thompson right now, in my opinion, is the best American heavyweight. Right? I know in the U.S. they're challengers to the throne. Right? Um, Deontay Wilder, Brian Jennings, Malik Scott, who's fighting uh, Derek Chisora and who is unbeaten as I make this video. Right? Eddie Chambers, Seth Mitchell now. Right? Jonathan Banks, Chris Ariola. I understand that the U.S. has a bunch of heavyweights who were vying for, you know, um, the best domestic heavyweight. But understand, there's a reason why Tony Thompson has earned multiple shots at the heavyweight title. Someone like Brian Jennings is still working for his first opportunity. Right? Tony Thompson has been the mandatory in the past. Right? Thompson, quite frankly, is one of the better heavyweights, period. 
not just in America, we're talking about worldwide, right? The problem, of course, is he's remembered for the Klitschko fights against one of the elites. And, of course, that second fight, you have people saying, gee, Thompson looked traumatized. Now here, just understand, Tony Thompson, in my opinion, other than punching power, which, of course, David Price has outsized punching power. Tony Thompson, whether he's a favorite or an underdog, and I understand he's an underdog again, does about everything better than David Price. You know, David Price, let's talk about his biggest win. He knocked out Audley Harrison in the first round. You know what? There's a growing cottage industry of fighters who've done that. Hasn't Deontay Wilder done that after the David Price fight? You know, Audley Harrison. Isn't Audley Harrison a very slow starter to begin with? Take a look at Audley Harrison against David Hay. Could that first round conceivably have had less action than it did? Right? Audley Harrison is really a guy who, quite frankly, shouldn't be viewed as a litmus test for a young boxer. You know, at the time, it was jarring. David Price beat Audley Harrison. If tomorrow you read in the paper that some young fighter beat Audley Harrison, would you be that impressed? Right? Price, to me, strikes me as a heavy puncher who's still trying to figure out how to deliver the heavy punch and who has a problem when you do things at certain angles on him. Right? You know, I thought that he was up on the ropes against Mac Skelton. Right? I thought, quite frankly, that Price had a problem the first time he fought Tony Thompson with Tony's movement. Look at the knockdown, right? Um, Tony's moving a bit and Price looks like he's watching him. Price didn't have that Vladimir Klitschko jab, the ability to hit a guy who's moving with the jab so you can freeze him, right? One of the reasons for a jab is to get the guy to stop moving. I'm moving, you hit me with a jab, I pause for a second, Here's the right hand, right? You know, it's almost like those old razor commercials where the first blade holds the hair so the second blade can cut it off, right? Vladimir Klitschko gets you to stop in the ring. He's dictating the pace. With Tony Thompson, Thompson's more of a bystander. You're moving, Tony's watching you, right? Let me also say, too, look at the first fight. Let's talk about chance, right? Because, of course, David Price, going into the fight, because of his amateur career, had some questions about his chin. I'll say this, that first fight, that's not a flash knockdown, folks. Tony hits him, Price goes down. When Price gets back up, he looks like he's dancing. His equilibrium is completely gone, right? Even though Price hits harder, you really have to wonder, if Price gets hit, is Price going to be able to stay upright? Let me also say, too, Tony Thompson has a punch. Don't judge him by the Klitschko fights. Judge him by the fights he's had against young lions like David Price, because Tony's not in there with Vladimir Klitschko, right? Understand, too, that these two guys are different. David Price overwhelms you with punching power. Tony Thompson's a chess player. It's a different dynamic. Tony's setting you up so he can hit you flush. He's the better chess player in this fight. So to sum up, I don't believe Tony Thompson is fighting Vladimir Klitschko in this fight. I think he's fighting David Price, right? I think David Price is a guy who still has holes in this game and who can't set you up like Vladimir Klitschko. He's tall like Klitschko. He looks like an athlete like Klitschko. He moves well in the ring when he's moving. But like Canelo, he moves, in my opinion, for about 90 seconds of the three-minute rounds. 
right? He's loitering. During that period of time, he's going to get battered by Tony Thompson. I like Tony Thompson to win the rematch. Hedged with, of course, David Price by knockout. Because David Price is one of the harder punchers in the division. No question about it. But unless David Price catches Tony Thompson, I'm expecting Tony Thompson to methodically undress him in the ring. I don't care where the fight is. It could be in David Price's backyard. I'm expecting Tony Thompson to have a shot at a knockout. And if it goes to a decision, I'm expecting Tony Thompson to win the decision. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I'll just say this. I'll end with the caveat. Right? David Price has a chance to win by knockout in every fight if you're going to hedge this. I take Tony Thompson to win. Keep in mind, he's the underdog. You're getting better than even money odds. Hedged with Price by KO. The bet I would not spend money on, and it's risky, is Price by decision. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me. Thanks for stopping by.